Um, as you know, this is our favorite night, yes. which is the student of the word night. This is where we have our interactive Bible study. We're able to dig down deep uh, and begin to matriculate through the word of God at our pace. Um, it also allows you all to ask any questions, give any suggestions, or even um, any commentary toward the word of God. And I believe this particular session is going to be one that um, it's going to touch everybody because it's one of those subjects that it affects everybody, no matter whether you are a mature saint or an immature saint. Um, this is something that's going to touch you. But before we get ready to jump into the word of God, I have a few housekeeping things that I need to cover. Um, first and foremost, uh, I wanted to touch on the buy-in. Somebody say buy-in. Buy-in. Yes, buy-in. These are the individuals that went over and above their tithe, their offering, and gave what I call a sacrificial offering toward our down payment. Um, the good news is we've already been pre-approved uh, by actually two lenders, two banks. Um, but they said all we need is some money. Somebody say some money. Some money. Money. Yeah, it's so money. It's not a big item. It's not anything that's major. It's just money. And I think a lot of time people, you know, put too much emphasis on money. But one of the things I've come to always understand is God has a way of taking care of his people. Yes, he, does. he says, worry not what you're going to eat, drink, or wear, for your heavenly father already know what you have need of. And I believe God already have our down payment already set up. Yes, and guess who it's going to come through? You. Amen. It's going to come through you. Amen. Those just clapping their hands, guess what? God is about to increase you. Amen. Because if he wants his church to be blessed, his church is blessed through you because we are the church. So you could begin to expect raises, bonuses, overtime, all these other things to begin to show up in your life because God is going to take care of his church. Um, and just to kind of give you an update, we have four families and two singles that's doing the monthly um, we also have four families and two singles that paid out. Somebody say paid out. Yeah, yeah like the paid out, the ones that dropped that willy lump lump. Clank, 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 clank. That's, that's Amen. old. Amen, and get it done. Media team, that's old. Oh, that's the old that's one. That's Sunday. the old one. Okay, that's the one from yeah, Sunday. Yeah, I didn't update it. But we do have an update because this past Sunday, I believe it was a young lady. She's not even a part of Ford Christian Center. She said, I got 500. I got five on it. Amen. And she dropped five. And then we also had another partner that decided to do the uh, three-month installment, which is uh, where you pay $166 over the course of three months. That equals $500. That brings us to a grand total of $4,094. Put your hands together for that. Amen. $4,094. And that leaves a small balance of $45,906. I like how he hey, said man. small balance. It's a small, <laughs> hey, baby, you already know they ain't, they, ain't, they ain't no money. We, we had that in the bank. You know, ain't, ain't no money. That's play play. Amen. So, you know, I believe Jesus that name. God is going to easily do that through the partners of the Forward Christian Center. And, and that's all we need. Um, our goal, y'all already know our goal. We want to stay around the five fifty, no more than about $600,000 range. And, of course, we're going to need about 25% down. Um, that's going to be our down payment. We're going to have to put about 125000 down. We have about 70000 now. So um, as we uh, continue to add the money uh, that goes toward our down payment, and we're going to uh, reach that, and we're going to um, either buy or build and do what God have called us to do over here on the new north side of Jacksonville. Amen. Amen. What you talking about? <laughs> she talking about past the Trout River Bridge. They don't yeah. know the new north side. <laughs> that, that's a little joke that we have going on. Anything past the Trout River Bridge, that's the old north side. That way. That way. Anything back this way is the new, new north, north side. side so, of Jacksonville. Amen. We're believing God that we're going to be on the new north side of Jacksonville. Yeah, that's the goal. Amen. That's the goal. Amen. All right. Having said that, um, those that have social media, Facebook more uh, specifically, please like us or at Forward Christian Center. You can like us at Forward Christian Center. Go ahead and pull out your cell phone, your iPad, your iPhone. Um, God won't be mad at you about pulling out your, t um, your, your iPad or iPhone here in the church. So go ahead and pull that out. Um, like us at Forward Christian Center. If you use the gram, please follow us at the Forward CC. Also, while you're out there on Facebook, share the live feed. So we're going to take a minute for you to just go ahead and share the live feed. Go ahead and share it. Share the live feed. And then we're going to pause for a selfie. 
Amen. We're going to pause for a selfie. And we're going to hashtag it. Ear infection. Hashtag it. Ear infection. Yeah, hashtag it. Ear infection. Take a selfie if you want to be selfish. If you want to be friendly tonight. And you want to show some love. Take a ussy with somebody. As a matter of fact, I want to see some usses tonight. Just going to pause for a minute and partner up with somebody you don't know and just take a ussy. Just make sure they don't have nothing in their nose. Yeah, make sure they ain't cock-eyed, cross-eyed. <laughs> if they are, take the picture anyway. And we're going to hashtag it, ear infection. Ear infection. Ear they got infection. a gang over there. They got a gang. Hold on. What they the crypt? They the crypts of the blood. All right, they the crypts. Lord have mercy. I'm scared of this section. They gangsterish over here. <laughs> All right. Well, we having too much fun. Let's get ready to stand for the reading of God's word, and we're going to jump right into uh, tonight's message. We're going to go to the book of Second Timothy, chapter four and verse three. Second Timothy, chapter four. In verse 3, that's where the text will be coming from. Uh, for those that don't have a Bible, it'll be on your screen. Uh, but better yet, we do have some deacons and ushers that'll give you the hardcore word of God. Uh, for those that are savvy, go ahead and pull up your Bible out and like us at, excuse me, not like us, but go to 2 Timothy <laughs> 4 and 3. 2 Timothy 4 and 3. 2 Amen. Timothy. 2 yeah. Timothy 4 and 3, and I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. Mm -hmm. uh, and it reads as this, for a time is coming mm -hmm. when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. Mm -hmm. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will teach them whatever their itching ears want to hear. They will reject the truth and chase after myths. But you should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry God has given you. And let us pray. Father God, I pray that you open up our hearts, our minds, and our ears to hear what your spirit says. I pray, Lord God, that as the word comes forth, it'll accomplish that which it was sent to do, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that our hearing, Lord God, will be right, Lord, and we'll be benefactors of your word of God because your word is spirit and it is life. We step aside that you may step forward. Speak through us Holy Ghost so that your people may be edified through your word and we pray these things in Jesus name. Amen. Alright. Amen. Amen. Here in uh, the book of 2 Timothy uh, it simply says that uh, there is a time that is coming when people will no longer listen to sound doctrine. They will no longer listen to wholesome teaching. They'll follow after their own desires because they'll start having what the word calls itching ears. Um, I believe, you know, a as we look at the scriptures, it's relevant to us because we're in a society that's no longer wanting to walk in sound doctrine. They want to follow behind fables. They want to follow behind um, um, feelings. feelings and um, even, um, I guess, Afrocentric uh, things more so than the word of God. Yeah. They don't want sound teaching. They don't want teachings that's geared around Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. They're more geared around teachings that are uh, inspirational and motivational and five steps to becoming rich or five steps to get this and get that. But God is saying, saying that we're living in that time where people are um, having itching ears and they're not wanting to have strong, sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. What is sound doctrine? The scripture says that the word of God is there for correction and instruction and reproof unto righteousness yes. that the men and women of God may be perfect and thoroughly furnished unto every good work. Uh, when you preach a strong word and you begin to preach that uh, living right is acceptable and that there is a heaven, there is a hell. Many people don't like hearing that because they all they want to hear about is God is love. Mm -hmm. 
But truth be told, although God is love, there is a heaven and a hell. And if you reject our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, yeah. you may find yourself in the hell that we're talking about. Mm. So the Bible is literally telling us to be careful to not fall into this place to where you're looking for a feel-good sermon. Um, a lot of y'all may not uh, think that. Many people are caught up in the feel-good sermons, but there are mega churches that are built around those feel-good sermons. Mm -hmm. They smile a lot. They don't say Jesus, but all they'll do is give you an encouraging message mm -hmm. to allow you to pursue the career and the things that are selfish and vain. Mm -hmm. But God is saying, beware of those things. Beware of those things. Because when you begin to preach sound doctrine, you got to preach that Christ has been crucified yeah. and Christ has risen from the yes. dead and Christ yes. loves us and Christ yes. cares for us. And it's good to walk in the truth and the knowledge and the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And if the, pa the, if the message isn't packaged with Jesus, it may just be catering to your itching ears. Another thing that sound doctrine will carry is that there is only one way to get to Christ. That's only way to get to God, to get to God, I mean. And that's Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. And if the word that you're hearing is not including that, then you may be in a place where your ears could be infected. Because a lot of people want to hear, oh, I can just do good, or I can just feel the universe, or I can just be at peace and just, I can get to heaven that way. No, there's only one way to get to God, and that's through his son. And if we take that out of the gospel, then now we're in a place of itching mm. ears. Uh, one of the articles I saw recently was there's a church of Kanye. Mm. A church of Kanye. Yeah. What about the church of Jesus? And they were praising, and they said, there's no sermon at this church. We don't need sermons. We just have good music that makes you feel good. Mm. And they were so excited, and they were just in there praising, doing Jam their music. Pack. People out there just jamming. Mm. But nowhere, there's no word, there's no conviction, there's nobody telling you that Jesus Christ is the only way. And there's nobody telling you in order to have salvation, you got to come through Jesus. And that you can't live like hell and think you're going to show up in heaven. Come on, All come on. of those things yeah. were just out. And they said, we don't need no, any of that. That's just... You know, that's what's wrong with the church today. They call today. it old church. Yeah, that's what's wrong with the church today. Y'all want to make people feel sad or some type of way. But when you come to the Forward Christian Center, <laughs> we're not here to make you feel sad or any nope. kind of way. But what we do want to do is challenge you to live your best life. Uh, you can come in this place any kind of way you want to. We will never preach a condemning gospel. We will preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, and his gospel is love. We yes. will teach love, but we will also teach what the word of God says. You know, there's no compromising in the word of God. Come on, come on, come there's on. There's only come on. truth. Come on. And what people are searching for in the world is truth. But what they don't realize, that truth is Jesus Christ. Truth is a person, and you can't find truth in those books. You can't find truth in Google. You can't tr find truth in all of these, oh, you got to find your history and your heritage. You got to find out we the true Hebrew black this, that, and that's the truth, and the black man is power, and we got, yeah, I'm black. But the first thing I am after all of that is I'm a Christian. Yes. I'm a born-again believer, believer yes. in the most high God. My color is not going to seal my entrance into heaven. Come on. It's not going to, Jesus is not going to look at me and say, oh, you the true Hebrew. Come on. <laughs> He's going to say, where's my blood? Yeah. And if my blood is on your life, if you've confessed me as your personal Lord and Savior, enter in my good and faithful servant. Amen. And so we got to make sure that we're not having our ears itching to hear things that are contrary to the word of God. Amen, amen. And I love it when it says we have, as believers, we have to work at telling others mm -hmm. the good news. We got to work at telling others of the good news. Uh, the main word I see in that is work. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, they're afraid of 
work. But as a believer, you got to work at telling others the good news. You have to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out. We call it Malcolm X style, and that is by any means necessary. So as a believer, we have to work at getting the good news out. We got to make sure that people know what is truth and what is error. We have to know, we have to make sure that people know who Jesus Christ is. We're living in a day where a lot of people haven't even heard the name of Jesus. Uh, I believe it was a few years back. Um, I believe uh, one of our, your, my wife's um, family members was 11 years old, never heard of who Jesus was, never been to church. And we got to understand we're living in that generation where there's a generation coming up behind us that knew not God. They don't know God. Don't know so that if we don't tell them who Jesus is, if we don't get the gospel to them, yeah. if we don't bring our kids to the house of the Lord, y'all yeah. better know we got kids that want to come to children's church, mm -hmm. but their parents refuse to bring them to children's church. Mm -hmm. and, and the sad part is they, their, their parents are saved, mm -hmm. but their children aren't. Mm -hmm. And to me, the best gift you can give your children mm -hmm. is the gift of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. And I think what happens is because we're stuck in our Christian world, we speak our Christianese and we do all our Christian things. We got all our Christian friends and we come to our Christian fellowship. We think that everybody knows Jesus. No. But there is a world of people that does not know Christ Jesus. One of the things that we were, uh, when we were in New York City, uh, there was a co some college students that came up to uh, Christy and I, and they started asking us. They was like, well, there's a survey. We want to find out what do you believe about God? And they started asking us these different questions. And I was curious after the survey just to find out, you know, what uh, answers have you gotten? And mm -hmm. she was like, well, we just kind of got started. But the first uh, person that we talked to, they don't believe that there is a God at all. They didn't believe that God even exists. And, you know, all of these different things. And we're walking around thinking, oh, everybody know God. Everybody know there's a God. No, there are a whole slew of people who do not know who Jesus Christ yes, is. Yes. So we have to be on post. We have to be ready. There's a generation of people uh, that don't uh, believe in taking a, their children to church. I know in my generation, although my mother, she was drugged to church and made to go to church. So when we got older, she didn't go to church, but then she made us go to church. And there are some people that I know that grew up with me because their parents made them go to church. They say, well, I'm not making my children go to church. And so now there's a generation of children who don't even appreciate being in the presence of God. Mm -mm. Uh, there is a falling away of the church itself because people don't value the time being with the people of God. So we just want to bring forth this series. This is uh, part one. Part one is called Diagnosis in case you all wanted to know that. But we're talking about ear infection, and we're praying that everybody get theirs cleared up today. Amen? Amen. So Amen. let's begin to look at diagnosis. I believe the power to define gives us the ability to fulfill. Yes. Diagnosis uh, defined as this, the identification of the nature of an illness or other problem by examination of the symptoms. When I start looking at this word diagnosis, many of us we're familiar with it because when we go to the doctor the first thing that they do is diagnose us mm -hmm. they diagnose our problem uh, and, but one of the things that I understand is when we go to the doctor we're going to the doctor for a reason mm -hmm. and it is because we have a problem yeah. uh, but one of the things I also understand is every year whether I feel like I have a problem or not mm -hmm. I still need to go to the doctor for Amen, amen. So while we're sitting in the doctor's office, yeah. I'm glad you guys decided to show up um, because some of you all may have an ear infection, and it is the role of the doctor to diagnose what's going on. But then there are some others that may be on the same road that might not have an ear infection, but you're just here for a checkup. But the checkup is there to make sure that you don't have an ear infection or something that's about to happen in your life. So we want to begin to diagnose uh, your ears. Second Timothy 4 and 3, and we'll read it again. Uh, for a time is coming when people will no longer listen, no longer 
listen. No longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. I'll just pause right there. One of the things I have to uh, allow everyone to understand is every time the doors of Forward Christian Center open, it's time for us to receive a diagnosis. It's time for us to open up our ears so we can listen to sound doctrine. But some people feel like they only have to listen to sound doctrine one time out of the week when the doors open two times. And their Bible can be opened up every day, but they refuse to do it. So to me, it is a sign that there are people that's out there and in here that no longer wants to listen to sound doctrine and wholesome teachings. You may have some working in the same ministry that you're working in. You might have some on first touch. You might have some on the praise team. You might have some on the dance ministry. That the only time you see them is on one appointment Sunday. But can I say any time you have something going on with you, you don't miss appointments with the doctor. Because every appointment you miss with the doctor, it sets you back further from where you need to be. There is a road and a track of recovery. There is a system set in place to help your healing come forth. To help your deliverance manifest in your life. But if you go missing those appointments when you really should be there, you might find yourself with an ear infection when God really would have you healed by now. Let's go back and look again at the scripture. These are some of the symptoms. Uh, they will follow their own desire. Mm. Anybody following their own desires? There's a world full of people following what they want to do. If it feel good, do it. Do it. Quesara, sara. Whatever will be, will be. What YOLO, you only live once. Uh. All of those things are their own desires. They're going after what they want to do uh, when it comes to uh, getting wise counsel. Mm -hmm. mm, they don't want that. No, 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 no. It's what I feel. I feel in my heart that I need to do this. What the scripture says that the heart of man is deceitfully wicked above all things. So why would somebody say follow your heart? That's the worst thing you the should worst. do. The worst, yeah. Don't follow your heart. You better follow the spirit of God. Come on, come on, come on. Because your heart will lead you somewhere, places that you don't need to go. How many have been in relationships because they follow their heart? And end up in a world of trouble. Whole lot of I trouble. Because I follow, oh, I love him. Oh, he loved me. Oh, I love her. And now you all shipwrecked and on the side of the road. Whoa, out. Itching for a scratch. <laughs> you got a disease. Following your heart. Itching and a scratch. That's not the will of God. God wants us to follow the spirit of God. Mm. There are some times when our heart is not into something, but when the spirit of God tells you to do something, you have to do it. Yes. Uh, just like Jonah in the story of Jonah in the well. well, his heart was not going after God, but he had to follow God after he had got shipwrecked and swallowed by the well and all kind uh, of things. Yeah. He was following his own heart, his mm -hmm. own desire, and he went after to do what he wanted to do and ended up in the belly of a whale. But when he decided to follow the Holy Ghost, he ended up where he needed to be. So that is what we're saying. Don't follow your own heart. Don't follow your desires because it will get you to a place of itching ears. Amen. So let's begin to examine the symptoms given by Paul. Number one, they no longer listen to sound teaching. Number two, they follow their own desires. Number three, they only want to hear preachers who preach feel-good messages. Feel-good messages. Have y'all heard some of those preachers that preach feel-good messages? You don't hear the name of Jesus mentioned one time in the message, but they preach feel-good messages. Number four, they reject truth 
and chase after lies and myths. They don't want to preach truth. They don't want to preach Jesus Christ. They want to talk about slavery. They want to talk about the black man doing this or the white man doing this to the black man. They only want to talk about the oppression. And they want to talk about the church not taking care of the black people in the communities. The church taking all the black people money. And they take in billions and billions of dollars. And the people that are part of the church after 10 years, they're still poor, this, that, and the other. The church need to do this with their money. They need to pay off the church. They need to pay off the people in the church bills. And they don't know nothing they reject the truth saying that there's more than one way to get to heaven when the scripture clearly says there's only one way to heaven only one way to God and that is through his son Jesus so if you have God and you don't have Jesus, you ain't getting to heaven no way. And why am I saying they're rejecting the truth? Because Jesus is the truth. I am the way. The truth. Come on, come on. I, I, although you might have some flat facts, although you might have, yeah, yeah, um, blacks were sl uh, uh, in slavery and, and this and that happened and we've been oppressed. Yes, 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 facts are fine, but you can't negate the truth. Yeah. The truth is Jesus Christ makes us free. Yeah. The truth is Jesus Christ gives us the right to the eternal life and the tree of life. The truth is we are saved through Jesus Christ. And if you preach all these other facts and, and you miss the truth, yeah. you're preaching itching ear sermons. Yeah. And the world have their ear listening mm -hmm. to all the itching ear stuff. Yeah, because that's what they want. When we look at uh, the natural symptoms, since we're talking about ear infections, one of the things as I was studying and I start looking at when we were looking at the spiritual symptoms, and when I pulled up the natural symptoms and I looked at them, I was like, it's a lot of parallel things that we can pull out. Mm -hmm. uh, the, one of the natural symptoms of a ear infection is an ear ache, uh, where their ears are hurting. A lot of people don't realize that their ears are aching. They're aching for something that uh, they feel they need, but it's not helpful to them at all. They're getting facts, but they're not really getting the truth of God's word. So then now they're in an aching ear situation. They have fullness in the ear where they hear so much stuff and they, they got so much information. <laughs> ears full. Their ears are full of stuff and information, but it's no truth involved. Mm. So now they're just full with information. They got problems hearing. They can't hear a sound word if they try because they can't grasp it all they're blinded by uh different things well this is this well why do you believe this way that's a white man what who says we uh, reverence a white jesus i don't know where they get that fact from yeah. and then they're saying oh oh well you can't god is not god there's science against it okay but what about the truth the truth of who jesus christ is and so we got all of these facts, and our ears are so full with facts, and we can't e even hear our, uh, what God is really trying to say. Our ears are ringing because we got so much going on, stuff ringing, ringing, ringing. Every second you got something that you're hearing, you got some discharge. Mm, that's nasty. Nastiness <laughs> coming out of your mouth. Foul. Anybody in experienced ear infections before? Oh, I know Shanta. <laughs> she thought she was the inspiration for this message. Because <laughs> baby keeps the ear infection. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank God for the healing. But they have discharge. And it can come out of their life in any type of way or form. Uh, where they're just spatting off and spewing all kind of hateful things. A person with an ear infection is a person who is just saying what they feel like saying is, is nasty. 
They say hateful things regarding the things of God. They say mm-hmm. hateful things about the church of Jesus Christ. They say hateful things about anybody who ever believes in God. So that's that discharge that is coming out of their mouth. And that's the same thing. It can go with vomiting. Amen. They just letting out some stuff. Anybody Throw, throwing up, Throwing up on people. Yeah, on unheard so much negativity, on Facebook. some unnecessary mm-hmm. stuff, and you just throwing up on everybody you know, mm. just saying something that you don't even know yourself. Mm-mm. You picked it up off of Google. You picked it up off of Yahoo. You done listened to some men, some mad black man mm. that done got injured in church. Yeah. He's hurting because he's hurt. He's seeing things from his paradigm. His limited paradigm ain't been nowhere but in Jacksonville. I was about to say something else. And Orlando. <laughs> and the stove. But yeah, he know everything. Vomiting on people just by what he heard. And now what he heard, he's spewing it out. And now it's infecting you. And you don't even believe Jesus no more yourself. You caught up into Jesus being a white man when the Bible ain't never said that he a white man. Mm -hmm. He's from the Mediterranean descent. Mm -hmm. He has some color, some pigmentation in his skin. Mm -hmm. But you mad now because you see all the pictures with white Jesus. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Y'all know people like that. Uh, uh, They upset. But my thought is, I don't care if Jesus green, (laughs) yellow, blue. He can be the rainbow. Why I did that? He can be the rainbow. But if I'm going to heaven, I'm going to heaven. I don't care. But they have that ear infection. They got a fever. Cause you to be 38 hot. By the stuff you hear. And yeah, got the chills, because yeah. most of the time when people have fevers, you're cold. Mm. And that's what they are. They're cold to people. Mm. Uh, they're, they don't have any love. The love of God is no longer there. They're covering themselves up. Anybody, when you get a fever, you just go straight for the covers. And you just want to cover yourself up. So now they're in a place where you just cold and you got covers on. You're not thinking about anything. you just cold towards everybody. Amen. Got a headache. Got a headache. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Migraines. You, 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 you can't think right. If anybody had an ear infection, it messed with your brain. You can't think right. It, 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 it hurts. And you have to, uh, you, you can't lay on this side of your, 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 your head. You got you to gotta turn, turn it a, another way just to be comfortable. They got a headache. You, you got stuff going on in your head all because something messing up your hearing. Got common colds. Get sick real easily. Number 10, other miscellaneous symptoms. Trouble sleeping up at night. Loss of appetite. Vertigo. And now you sluggish. You barely come to the house of the Lord. Because you don't reverence who Jesus is anymore. You don't reverence the things of God. You don't reverence the kingdom of God. All because of what you let come into your ear gate. All right, it's time for you all to talk. Our first interactive Bible study question of the night. Uh, And if you are here for the first time, all you have to do is raise your hand and one of our deacons or ushers will bring you a microphone. Uh, Question is, have you ever encountered anyone who displayed these symptoms in their life? Let's talk about it. Yeah, have you ever encountered anyone who displayed these symptoms in their life? Oh, let's start here since she has it. Hello, my name is Allison. Amen. Um, I've encountered... um, someone like this actually on social media last night and I'm very thankful to be in in the uh, house of the Lord tonight because I did not like the message that um, this woman put on on YouTube. Mm. She um, basically made it seem like those who wait until marriage to Mm. have sex are are foolish Mm. and I was so hurt by that and I'm really glad that I'm here hearing this message to 
I feel so much amen. amen, amen. We believe in yes. keeping it locked until you, <laughs> uh, get, until you <laughs> get get the rock. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can't don't don't let. Your leg. I, 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 <laughs> you, but don't you ain't it. supposed to. And I, I, I got to pause there because you ain't oh. supposed to let brothers or sisters drive your car before they buy it. Not your cheese. Not your it's cheese. not your cheese. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, so, so we just want to. Paint the picture, and I'm just going to pause because there are some singles that are in relationships, and I'm letting you know if you're in a relationship and they're trying to test the waters, don't let them get in your waters anymore. And I'm a firm believer that there are some people that probably would be married by now if they wouldn't be giving themselves so freely to the one yeah. that, they, that they say they love. Mm -hmm. Agree. Um, okay, first I want to refer to what Pastor C was saying about um, about how people are always saying, you know, oh, um, pastor should pray for the church. And I, oh, I don't look right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't pay, like, should, you know, help people pay their bills. When you were saying that, I thought about in the book of Acts when it was talking about the first church, about how everybody helped, each, helped mm -hmm. everybody. But the Bible don't say that the pastors helped everybody. Yeah. The Bible says that everybody helped everybody. Yeah. So you don't want to hear that the pastors are, you know, the church is making money, but what are you doing to help the church? Mm -hmm. right. Okay, I'm letting it go. So, um, y'all know I've encountered people with this. Um, I'm just going to say it. He's not a bad person. I still love him as DJ Daddy, you know. <laughs> but it's... You know, I, I, I'm being, I'm just being Go ahead, real. keep it real, I'm not keep trying it real. To like, it's, and it's mm -hmm. not personal. It's a, it's a thing, like, and I've encountered a lot of people with this. But and the the worst part is being married to somebody who, you know, had go through this stuff, have these symptoms, and don't want to, you know, be in the house of God, don't mm -hmm. want to mm -hmm. um, listen. You know, they say things like, oh, there are so many religions out there. You know, and why is yours, you know, the one we should follow? And it's not just that particular person. It's a lot of people that I've encountered with this. And they don't want to hear it. Just like what she said, it's so many people. I was just listening on YouTube. One of the girls I'm subscribed to, she did a whole um, video about being a virgin until you marry. And she, young girl, like 20-something years old, I don't think it's necessary and these are the things that our kids are listening to. These are things that people are watching. But it's so many people who are on there, and they're like, yes, I agree with you. Because yes. people don't want to, people think that when they live as a Christian, they're bound by rules, and that's not really the, the case. Yeah. Amen, amen, amen. And that's so true, that's so true. Um, because we're uh, saved, we're not bound by rules. Remember the rules and laws, that's the Old Testament. Uh, but now we're in a new covenant a better covenant we're not governed by the rules and the regulations but we're governed by the love that we have for yes. god and that's the problem with today's society mm -hmm. they don't have a love for god yes. and when you don't have a love for god you don't have a standard that comes with it yes. because you got to understand in love there's a standard mm -hmm. although i love my wife the standard is there are some people that i can't give my love to and they think that that's a rule and a regulation. But no, that's just the boundaries and the limits that's in the love and the covenant that we have together. Yeah. Amen. Is it on? Keep the mics on. Okay. Please. All right. We might have to uh, get a better mic. All right. All right, so actually, I'm so thankful to be in the house of the Lord, too, as well, because I just literally had a conversation with my friend of 12 years wow. yesterday, mm -hmm. and I was talking to her. I was doing hair, and I had a conversation. We was talking literally about three hours about this stuff, wow. but um, she has done some research and, you know, did, did all her research. Facts. Facts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she's doing, you know, she's following Dr. Sevy, Dr. Sevy, and all this mm -hmm. stuff or whatever, and now she's on this thing where she wants to eat better. And I was asking her all, she was like, girl, I don't, so, girl, I just got a lot of research. I just, I mean, it takes days to even explain it to you. So upon, upon her saying that, my question was, okay, 
your research, did that make you, did that give you a, a increased love for God? Like, what did that do for you? And she was like, well, you know, yeah, but she did. She went back. She's like, no, not really. I just look at God a certain, a different way now. Mm. So her way that she looks at God is God is in, in anything that's positive. God is, in, God is a plant. God is a tree. God is, you know, all these sorts of things. Mm. And she was like, about the white man, like, you know, the government is doing this and the white man is this. I mean, literally yesterday, so it's crazy that I'm in, you talking about this, you guys. But I was just talking to her. She was like, "All I believe that all religions are pretty much the same thing. And I'm like, well, let me, can I in, in, inform you what's the difference from our religion? Yes. And so I told her, I said, we're serving a true and living God. Yes. We're not serving a dead yeah. God. So I was telling her that, and I was just explaining to her all these sorts of things. I mean, I was kind of, because I believe that our religion, our uh, faith is historical and it can be proven. It is fact. The resurrection of Jesus Christ yes. is proven. proven. It is it's true. Yes. So I was telling her, I mean, but to say all that, it is this whole thing of people are really just believing all this slavery. Oh, the New Testament was created in when slavery time was, you know, so it was just a lie. But yeah. to God be the glory, I'm going to continue to pray for her. And, Amen. Yeah, so. And that's all we can do. Prayer. You have to make sure you're praying for them and just believe in God. Because sometimes they may get to a point where they can hear you, but we'll go a little further along. And Bible study, you'll hear. Sometimes people just can't hear. So. Amen. Amen. Um, I have encountered people like that. I'm a very close person, but also I've been that person. Mm. And I am in the process now of coming out of my yeah. intervention. Amen. Amen. Because Amen. for a long time, the reason I had my ear infection was because of past things that's happened to me mm. uh, regarding church or regarding my personal beliefs or why did God let this happen? If God really loved me, why would he let this happen? Mm. And then I started looking at the law of attraction and I started looking into other areas and the, basically the law of attraction is nothing but having faith. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it was pushing me further away from God. Yeah. So God was like, hey, I'm going to show you that's not really working for you yeah. either. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to put you in a place where your law of attraction is not going to work for you. The things that you're thinking is not going to work mm. for you. And you're not going to have a choice but to come to me yeah. to heal that air infection. Amen. And now I'm in the process of healing. Amen. 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 That's awesome. good. That's good. That's good. Amen. Let me give everybody uh, the law of attraction that we should live by. It's called the anointing of God. <laughs> Amen. The anointing it attracts. Amen. Yes, it'll unlock your gifts. The scripture says your gifts will then make room for you and bring you before great people. So yeah, uh, the, the law of attraction that we live by is the anointing of God. Amen. Amen. Any other thoughts? Any other before right. we move on? Okay, one more. Okay. It's not so much of the ear infection. I guess in a way it can be like an ear infection because of just the lack of knowledge. But when you spoke on the singles and waiting and holding yourself and stuff, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, Social media is something serious. Because it was last night that I was on social media where this girl posted and was like, if you're not doing what you're supposed to do for your man, he going to go and find it somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And I was just like shocked at all the comments that was there and everybody that was agreeing and all the hearts that was reacting to it. Mm. And I commented. I couldn't help. I was like, what What that, kind of man is this? That's, that, that, like, that's classic Lisa. <laughs> y'all, like, If y'all know Lisa. Yeah. Um, what kind of man is that? I done been yeah. there before with my husband, but mm -hmm. we communicated. It wasn't mm -hmm. no stepping out, and then mm -hmm. we got back on track. Exactly. Yeah. Like, no hearts on it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so I was just like, um, I really want, it just set me in a place where I wanted to talk to the singles yeah. and let them know, like, don't follow that kind of stuff. Mm. Because that was crazy to me. Yeah. And it made me appreciate my husband more. And I'm like, y'all really don't know out there in that secular world that it's better than men out there for you. Like, if yes. they don't want to wait on you, let them go. Yeah. And on, I said, on, I was like, um, the girl was like, no, that's just called a spicy man. No, that's called a man. <laughs> and I was like, yes. I, I was like, I had one of those before, and I mm -hmm. let him go. Now I have the one that don't mind communicating and working yes. it out. Then we go in our bedroom, do what we do. Like these people crazy. So all my singles out there, please hold on and please don't listen to that kind of stuff. Hey, amen. amen, amen, amen. That's good. That's good. I I, I want to pause. Lisa, grab grab that mic again. But I, I just feel led uh, to have you share your testimony because I know a little bit about your testimony. How you were in one relationship and you made a commitment uh, to God. Uh, could you? Speak along those lines, because I feel like someone is here that may need to uh, hear that. Okay, I can uh, say that I was in a relationship before, and 
to me, I thought this was it. This was somebody that I knew from my childhood, and he came back, and I used to have a major crush on him. So I was like, yeah, this is going to be it. This is it. You followed but, your heart. Yeah. <laughs> so this is But I did end up, I got a little help because, um, oh, and to back it up, too, long story short, that could have been me with a earache, too. God always deal with me with my doubt. Mm. When I was younger, you couldn't tell me somebody was a prophet or a prophetess. I didn't believe in that type of stuff. You can't tell me God can snatch the taste out of my mouth. I didn't believe that kind of stuff. But I go to the club, and I drink the same gin I've been drinking every Saturday. And, I, and I'm like, this nasty. Can y'all take this back and give me something else? And it's like, ma'am, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. I remember I said in church, I don't believe God can snatch the taste. That was the last time I had gin. Amen. Wow. Um, I didn't believe in the prophet. This lady came to me for photo, and that's my mama calling. Hey, mama calling. When this lady spoke over my life, like, I was like, uh, sin. What you told this lady about me? Why you told this lady my business? And she was like, I didn't say nothing to you. So fast forward, this the same prophet that came to my life and was like, Lisa, I see you with your little male friend. Do what you're doing right now, but that ain't him. Wow. And I was like, huh? That's not him. God's sending you your man. And when he's sending you your man, if he gonna have a house, he gonna have a car. He gonna have, all you need to do is take your clothes and go. Mm. So I started looking at the other one, like, okay, we finna back up. <laughs> and when I told him, I'm holding myself to marriage. He told me, I'm old-fashioned. Ain't nobody going to wait on you. That's not how it work. You mm. need to get with the times, all that kind of stuff. Okay, go ahead about your business. He left. I spent all of 2015, for the most part, by myself. Mm. And that's when David came. Amen. Mind you, I dated David three years prior. But we didn't work out. I didn't know what was going on, but I know that had something to do with God. Because I can say, when me and David broke up, that's the one male that I never bashed. When we broke up, I found a journal where I prayed and prayed and prayed for him. And I was like, even if we're not meant to be together, Lord, put this man where he needs to be, back wow. in the place that he was when I first met him. Yeah. He done lost you. Help him to find you again. Yeah. After them three years, he came back. He found God again. He found me again. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You had to pray for him, not knowing they were going to come full circle. Yeah. Amen. Back to you. Amen. Yeah. God. He actually had no problem waiting. And I can't say the one from my past who told me I was old fashioned, he came out of the woodwork before and he called me. And I couldn't wait to answer my phone because I knew what he wanted to ask. <laughs> did that boy wait on you? Did he? Yes, he did. Amen. Yeah. He was like, You gained the weight. I didn't know you could eat like that and gain weight. No, that's called happiness, something that you did. Yeah. Uh, Amen. We waited, we waited. And guess what? We got our honeymoon, baby. This is our blessing that we've been waiting for. Yeah. Y'all the right way. You're going to get exactly what you want from God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That old-fashioned chick that got married. <laughs> Amen. And Glory got God. waited for. Yes. I That's love awesome. it. I love it. Amen. Somebody, one other person right here, and then we'll go on. Mother. Praise the Lord. Praise him. Thank God for his goodness and his mercy. Yes. I just want y'all to pray with God, when my husband brought her here, he wanted to put her in a nursing home for God mm -hmm. to know, take her in and love on her. Yes. And share Christ with her. Yes. So I always share Christ with her, but the other day she got so nasty, she told me God was going to get me, and she was going to see me, and you're going to go to hell. I ain't going to hell. Mm. And just said so many ugly things. And I said, well, I ain't going to fool with her no more. Mm -hmm. I take her anywhere she want to go. You know, let her stay as long as she wants. So I was going to start fooling her. God said, no, you don't do that. Don't mm. let people stay in hell. Yes. Just pray for her and continue to love on her. Yes. So that's what I've been doing. So y'all pray. Because she said, I'm 90 years old. I don't know what God got me here for. I must be doing something for you. I said, he got mm -hmm. you here for so you can be saved, so you can go to hell. Yes. And so she always, you going. I ain't going to hell. <laughs> so pray. You know, I still love her. I showed her love today. And I'm going to continue to show her love. But she needs, she, you know, pray for her. Yes. She don't need to, I don't want her to go. Amen. And we'll continue to lift Miss Gladys. Amen. Oh, yes. Trust in God because yes. God has a purpose and a plan for her life. Yes. And he placed her in your care yes. so that you can minister to her. And I think a lot of times we get people into our care and when they we don't see the immediate results, we want to say, oh, I, I'm done. But don't let people change it. Like Mother Betty said, don't let people change who you genuinely are. And it can happen. You know, when you're giving out and you're pouring out and you're pouring out into people, and you get 
uh, negativity back, something on the inside, that flesh want to say, well, I ain't doing this anymore, or I'm done with people, I'm, I'm, I'm finished, I, I'm not doing this anymore, I'm just doing what I need to do. But we still got to be who God called us to be. We still got to love on people the way God wants us to love on them. We can't throw people away just because they have a bad day or we feel like we overwhelmed with stuff. We still have to love them in the Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So the word of God, it should challenge us to change yes. and become better, not just feel good. Mm -hmm. um, this is the part where we have to make sure that uh, we're getting the word of God and it's challenging us yeah. to grow. It's challenging us to become better. We have to also make sure that we're in an environment that's conducive to growth. Mm -hmm. Every environment is not conducive to growth. If you're just there for a feel good message, it's not conducive to your growth. We're talking about your spiritual growth. Um, although, yeah, it may push you to grow in the secular arena and become ambitious and open up a business and, and a door and, and those opportunities. But we're talking about your spiritual growth. Is it, is it going to allow you to mature and develop into the man and the woman of God that God have called you to be? Remember, uh, when we when we studied the word of God, scripture says that Jesus, he had some disciples, yeah. those that were Discipline. When you start looking at that root word of disciple, it means to be disciplined. Those that were studious, those that were students of the word, yes. those that had a hunger and a thirst for righteousness, yes. not just a hunger and a thirst to elevate in the corporate arena, yes. but I'm talking about a hunger and a thirst for yes. righteousness, a hunger and a thirst to see people soul, uh, soul save, a hunger and thirst to see people grow and mature in the things of God. So when you come to the house, of God it's not just so you feel good it's to make you better and a stronger believer in the things of God amen second Timothy 2 15 it says do your best to present yourself to God as one approved mm -hmm. a worker who has no need to be ashamed rightly handling the word of truth. So we got to make sure we're presenting our body. We're not just doing anything the way we want to do it, that we're actually making necessary steps for growth. If you're coming into the house of God and nothing about you changes, if you can leave a service and not take a piece of a word and apply it to your life, then you're not studying the word of God because mm -hmm. it may not be for you. Say, for instance, you're here tonight and you say, well, I don't have an ear infection. Well, you can stash that word in your spirit and you can share it with somebody on your job. Yes. Or you can take it to your sister or your brother and give somebody the word. I always know this one thing. When God has a word or he sets a word in my, uh, in my spear or in my where I can hear it, I say that is something that you want me to hear. It may not be today. It might be yes. for tomorrow. It might be for next week because he's always going to test and try us based on the word of God that he's given to us. So when we hear a word, we can't just say, oh, well, that's for somebody else. No, God is going to take that same word that you heard and have it applied to your life. So never sit in a service and think, oh, that's not for me or oh, I, I've overcome that or I'm past that. But just like the word of say, God says, take heed to yourself, lest you lest fall. You, fall. Yes. you know, we can't think that, oh, we overcome this or that, and we can't, we're too big for this. We have to make sure we watch everything that goes on in our life and what goes in our ears. Amen. Because if you find it difficult to receive mm -hmm. good counsel and sound word, you may have an ear infection. Yes. If you find it difficult to sit down in the house of God, and open up your ears to hear the word that God has for you. Although it might not be uh, for you at that time, just as my wife said. But to have, be studious enough to just sit down and hear it. Yes. And take counsel by it. Mm. You may have an ear infection. Mm. Because what you're doing is you're wanting something to move you in the situation that you're in right now. But God is not just wanting to move you in the situation that you're in right now. He may be just trying to drop a word in your lap yeah. that you're going to need in your future. Yes. You worrying about your right now mm -hmm. when God's worrying about what's ahead of you. 
He's saying, I want to position you to where you can hear the word of God. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You got to be willing to sit down. I believe we talked about it uh, last week to where sometimes people get so caught up into doing ministry. And they think that the ministry that they're doing constitutes their relationship with God. No, you got to sit down and you got to eat this word. Why? Because the word is God himself. And so often you'll get caught up into doing ministry and you'll miss what God is wanting to truly do in your life. Second Timothy 3, 1 and 5. And it says, you may as well know this too. Timothy, Murray, Durham, Sarita, Sky, Tanya, that in the last days, it is going to be very difficult to be a Christian. For the people will love only themselves and their money. They will be proud and boastful, snaring at God, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful to them, and thoroughly bad. They will be hard-headed and never get it, give in to others. They will be constant liars and troublemakers and will think nothing of immorality. They will be rough and cruel and sneer at those who try to be good. They will betray their friends. They will be hot-headed, puffed up with pride, and prefer good times to worshiping God. They will go to church, yes, but they won't really believe anything they hear. Don't be taken in by people like that. That word there? It's tight as right. This is what's going to happen. And we're in these days where people want to come to church, but they don't want to hear what's really being said. Because you can be in a place, but your heart not be there. You can be right here in this building, right here tonight, and your heart be all the way down to Edgewood Avenue. Austin's Restaurant. Your mind all the way in Orlando. Popeye's Chicken. You thinking about Carabas. Daytona Beach. You but, th- but th- th- grill. You think about the wings <laughs> in Daytona. Them honey wings, Lord have mercy. You thinking about what you going to do when you leave this place. The Boom phone Keisha. call that you about to get. Delicious. <laughs> you think Chocolate. about Magic City. Long Boy Coconut. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> Slim. Black. Dude in the gray uh, bicycle shorts. I don't know. What they bicycle call them? Bicycle shorts. Gra- gray- oh, that's what it is. Gray sweat. Hold sweat. on. Gray sweatpants. Where Fred at? Where Fred? <laughs> yeah. Mine far from the, from the things of God and the house of God. The King James Version says that you deny the power that God has and a lot of people are in a place where they come to service but they're not believing any word that's being spoken they sit because you know especially teenagers because their parents bring them to church but they don't have a true relationship with who Christ Jesus is but can I encourage you not to sit in the midst of God and miss God completely How can you sit in the presence of the Most High God and still go to hell? Let me encourage you today, if you hear the sound of my voice, Uh to make Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior. Because all of us got a ticket to get out of here, and all of us not going to make it out of here. None of us going to make it out of here alive. But when you meet your maker, you better believe that you're going to wish that you made him your personal Lord and your Savior. Because the word of God says that every knee is going to bow. Every shall tongue shall confess, shall confess that Jesus, Jesus Christ, is he is the Lord. 
And if you don't believe that he is the Lord, let me tell you today, he is the Lord. Yes. He is the Lord God Almighty. He's the only true and living God. Yes. And if you want to live, and I'm talking about have life more abundantly, then you need Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Don't let the world clog up your ears. Don't let the world cause you to miss God because you want to feel good. Don't let the world cause you to miss God because your body is calling for something. Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sow, that's what he's going to reap. So if you reap to the flesh, you're going to receive from the flesh. But if you sow in the spirit, you're going to receive life and that more abundantly. Yeah. Come on and give God some praise. We out of time. Yes, yes. Come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. You are. Hallelujah. I gotta be. I wanna be where you are. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. I gotta be. I gotta be where you are. Hallelujah. I wanna be. I wanna be where you are. I gotta be. I gotta be where you are. I wanna be where you are. I gotta be where you are. Hallelujah. I wanna be where you are. Hallelujah. Father God, we love you. We honor you. Father God, we thank you for your word tonight. Father God, I thank you for opening up our ears to hear what your spirit says. Father God, I thank you for allowing us to hear your word that is truth right now. Father God, we come against every fact right now, everything that was spoken outside of your will right now and we stand on your truth because you are the truth you are the way you are the truth you are the light so father god we thank you lord god for being able to hear the truth hallelujah i thank you for opening up our ears right now hallelujah to begin to touch our appetite to where we continue to want to eat on the strong meat lord god and i thank you lord god for allowing us to continue to grow up in you right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We shall not believe the lies. We shall not believe the myths. We shall not get caught up, Lord God, into the things of this world, but we shall stand on your word, Lord God. Hallelujah. We shall stand on your word right now in the name of Jesus because it is truth and it is life. So, Father God, have your way, Lord God, in our life like never before. I thank you, Lord God, for clearing up those ear infections right now. I thank you, Lord God, for giving us, hallelujah, the proper medicine. Hallelujah. We need, Lord God, tonight to be able to hear what your spirit says, to be able to follow what your spirit says, and to, and to continue to live, hallelujah, according to your spirit, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for all that you have said in our lives lives to do right now hallelujah and i thank you lord god for all that you're going to continue to do in each and every one of our lives in the name of jesus and we give you praise we give you honor and we give you glory in jesus marvelous name somebody give god some praise hallelujah we love you god we honor you and we thank you